Week 8. Day 50, on not resting on your laurels. I think if you do something and it turns out pretty good, then you should go do something else wonderful, not dwell on it for too long. Just figure out what's next. Steve Jobs. To be human is to grow, challenge yourself, and strive to always become better. It's important to celebrate your triumphs, but dwelling on them for too long can lead to resting on your laurels and jeopardizing your future growth. After you're done celebrating your success, figure out what your next challenge is. How can you take your life to an even higher level? For example, if you've successfully lost weight, now is a good time to gain some muscle or improve your nutritional habits. If you've put your financial life in order by building a small nest egg, it's a good opportunity to take it one step further and work on achieving financial independence. Treat wonderful accomplishments as opportunities to accomplish even more wonderful things, and not as permission to become lazy. Day 51, on taking action, in spite of potential criticism. People who say it cannot be done should not interrupt those who are doing it. Unknown. Some people don't want to start exercising because they're afraid that others will laugh at their inability to perform a push-up or run for more than 60 seconds without losing their breath. They might be afraid that their friends will talk behind their backs, taking bets when they're going to fail. Thousands of people all over the world dream of entrepreneurship, but are afraid to take the first step because if their business fails, their ego will suffer too hard of a blow. Self-discipline isn't only about forcing yourself to do things that are unpleasant for the sake of long-term goals. It's also about resisting the temptation to stay mediocre in order to avoid criticism. True, staying in your comfort zone is safe and there's little criticism you'll encounter along the way. However, there's a high price associated with this choice, you won't ever get to change your current situation. Over the long term. How important is it really that some unintelligent meathead smirks at you at the gym when you're struggling to complete a set of push-ups? Is the momentary pain of it really greater than the pain of regret when you realize that another year has passed without you acting on your goals? Day 52, on thinking for yourself. When I meet someone, I consider how normal their life is. I do this not because it's a 100% accurate heuristic on how much I'll respect someone, but because it's damn close. If you have a totally normal life, then there are only two possibilities, you've thought through every aspect of your life and miraculously agree with society on each one, or you don't think at all. I try not to associate with people who don't think. Tynan. Self-discipline is hard to attain. And because it's not common, sooner or later somebody will deem your behaviors abnormal. I maintain a healthy weight and physique, but I still fast for 16 to 20 hours daily, and abstain from food for 36 hours or more every several weeks. My relationship with food is often criticized by other people. If I don't stuff my face with food every 3 hours, then surely I've developed an eating disorder. The norm is to eat often. And if your behavior differs from it, you're weird. However, I do what I consider to be best for me, and I refuse to follow different eating habits merely because it's the most common way of doing things. It's difficult to trust your own judgment when everybody around you is doing something different, but if everything you do is in accordance with society's norms, then what you're going to get is the same results as everybody else does who follows those norms. So what if others think it's weird that you'd rather save money instead of buying a new car every two years? You're the one who has less financial stress, even if it costs you a little to reject the temptation to spend money unnecessarily. So what if you're not partying every weekend like everybody else and instead work hard to grow your business? You're the one who will eventually enjoy wealth, while those others will complain about their finances for the rest of their lives. So what if people consider you weird because you go to sleep at 9 and wake up at 5 in the morning, while they stay up until 2 in the morning watching TV shows? It's you who's going to get more done by 10 in the morning than they'll accomplish in the entire week. Trust your own judgment and think for yourself. 
It's better to suffer from your own choices than waste your life away because you were mindlessly following the herd. Day 53, on having a burning yes inside. You have to decide what your highest priorities are and have the courage, pleasantly, smilingly, non-apologetically, to say no to other things. And the way to do that is by having a bigger yes burning inside. Stephen Covey Without the bigger yes burning inside of you, there's no way you'll continue making the uncomfortable choices over the long term for the sake of your goal. The primary reason why I stuck to entrepreneurship, despite countless failures, was my intention to help my parents build a house in the countryside. It was their dream, and by extension, my dream. This big yes had been burning inside me no matter what was happening with my business. Even after another big defeat, I still knew that I would never lay down my arms in the fight to become able to give them their dream. If you have such a strong yes inside you, you'll also refuse to surrender the fight to achieve your dream. Your burning yes will also help you pinpoint your priorities and disregard distractions. For example, if you decided to save money for the future education of your child, saying no to spending money on things you'd like to have, but don't need, would be much easier than without such a powerful motivator. You would be focused on the long view of where you wanted to be when your child was older. If your biggest dream in life is to become a surgeon, you won't feel apprehensive about declining an invitation for a party because you want to prepare yourself for an important exam. The yes burning inside you would be stronger than the fear of missing out on a few hours spent drinking with your friends. Granted, as we've already discussed, there should be some balance in everything, but generally speaking, you'll do well if you can discover a burning reason why you want to accomplish a given dream and unapologetically say no to anything that might threaten your chances of making it come true. Day 54, on Underestimating the Long-Term Approach we always overestimate the change that will occur in the next two years and underestimate the change that will occur in the next ten. Don't let yourself be lulled into an action. Bill Gates Bill Gates' quote refers to the evolution of personal computing, but the world of self-discipline isn't any different. A staggering number of people give up on their goals just weeks or months into them, discouraged that they still haven't reached their goals or that their results are lackluster. Sorry to have to break it to you, but the world doesn't work that way. With few exceptions, nobody can build a successful business in six months, achieve a perfect physique in three months, learn a new language in four weeks, or become a self-disciplined person overnight. However, the sky's the limit for those who are in it for the long haul. Ten years of dedicated practice can turn anyone into a world-class expert. When you gain momentum, you'll get exponential results. The trick is to stick to your goals long enough for the velocity to accrue. For example, in the first year you might only get your business off the ground, but in its third or fourth year it can explode virtually overnight. What actually happens is not an overnight success, but a process that took place over several years, during which it built upon itself in an exponential way. When you look at my catalog of books, you might be tempted to say that I succeeded right away. Martin's first book became a bestseller, so it's possible to become a best-selling author in a few months. That would be a great example of overestimating what you can achieve in a short period of time. My first book wasn't actually my first book. I'd been writing, articles, blog posts, books etc. for a long time before I started writing about self-discipline. It was a process of well over 10 years that resulted in my becoming a best-selling author. Whenever setting a new goal, take the long-term approach. Unlike the person who assumes that their world can change overnight, be in it for the long haul, and the short-term fluctuations won't make you give up. Day 55, On Bearing Misfortunes Nobly Remember to on every occasion which leads thee to vexation to apply this principle, not that this is a misfortune, but that to bear it nobly is good fortune. Marcus Aurelius Hardships are a part of life and while nobody, with the exception of masochists, 
enjoys pain, they can be valuable because they present an opportunity for personal growth. I like to say that you discover how deep your self-discipline goes when you struggle, and not when everything goes well. You aren't self-disciplined because you worked hard when you were fired up to work. You're self-disciplined when you continue to work hard when the last thing you want to do is work. You aren't self-disciplined because you can't afford candy, so you don't eat it. You exhibit self-control when you deny the treats that are offered freely to you, for example when you're at a party with a buffet selection of high-calorie snacks. You aren't self-disciplined when you wake up early in the morning to work on your new business. You're self-disciplined when you still wake up early in the morning when it seems that your business is going nowhere. Misfortunes aren't fun to deal with, but bearing them nobly strengthens your ability to handle even worse circumstances in the future. In a sense, trials and tribulations are like training. You may not enjoy it, but you know that eventually it will pay off and more than recoup for any suffering you're going through at the moment. Day 56 on thinking you can. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win, but think you can, it's almost certain you won't. If you think you'll lose, you're lost. For out in the world we find, success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before. You can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go. To the stronger or faster man. But soon or late the man who wins. Is the one who thinks he can. Walter D. Wintle. We often limit ourselves because we don't think we can achieve something. Today it may be hard for you to imagine that you can live without dessert or that you can live below your means. It doesn't mean it's impossible. Though, it's only your subjective opinion, not a fact of life. Moreover, thinking that you're unlikely to win means that you'll put in less effort than you could. Why would you work your fingers to the bone if you were uncertain of success? Rock climbing has made it particularly clear to me. When you approach the route thinking that it's beyond your abilities, you won't do your best. After all, why try your best if you know that you aren't going to climb it anyway? You'll most likely give up when you encounter the first obstacle, while a person thinking they can climb it will fight as hard as they can to keep climbing. In the end, the person that doesn't believe in their abilities will give up along the way while the person that is certain of their abilities will reach the top. Periodically try things that you think are outside of your ability with a positive attitude and the belief that you can succeed. Chances are you will get a positive surprise and achieve something you thought was beyond your reach.